Is it time to repeal the Second Amendment? Hello everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense. And there's been some talk recently, or at least I've seen a couple articles about people coming out more and more to say, hey, it's just time to repeal the Second Amendment. A uh, week or two, maybe even up to three now ago, I saw some article in the USA Today. I would go find it and link it, but honestly, it's all the same stuff you've heard before. Uh, there's really nothing new or interesting in this discussion from the other side. In addition to that, uh, I saw that Michael Moore, again, I think it was maybe two-ish weeks ago now, released his replacement for the, 20, for the Second Amendment. Uh, I think it was the 28th, I think is what we're on now. May maybe a different number, I can't quite remember. Uh, but basically, you know, again, all the same stuff. You know, background checks, these guns are banned, you have no right to guns, whatever, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. And right now, in the House, it's in committee, they are debating uh, a full-on assault weapons ban, uh, which I've seen some clips from that in the past couple days, and uh, that one's a doozy. I rise in opposition to the amendment. What this stabilizing brace, which is depicted here, when a, when attached here, it turns this weapon into an automatic weapon. This bumps, it becomes a bump stock. And so it will allow that to essentially be fired like an automatic weapon. That's the danger. So I have to very strongly oppose the amendment. So this discussion keeps coming up from the other side, and at least they're just being more honest at this point and just saying, you know, should we repeal the Second Amendment? Well, there's a very, very significant problem with that that I know the other side doesn't care about. However, it's worth mentioning anyway. And that is that the Second Amendment doesn't guarantee you anything. Uh, the Second Amendment recognizes a pre-existing right. That, that's what we believe about American government. That's what the founding fathers who wrote the amendments believed. The Constitution is not a document that grants you certain rights that can just be arbitrarily moved around or changed or whatever. The Constitution is rather a document that exists to restrict the powers of government and thereby empower and protect the people. That's the purpose of the American Constitution. It's why it's one of the most radically different government documents in the history of mankind ever. And that's a fairly easy thing to say because in history of governments in mankind ever, no government was ever established with the explicit purpose of protecting people's rights. That, that was never a thing until America showed up. And so in that case, we are unique among the nations throughout all history. And wonder of wonders that this system has led to the most prosperous, powerful nation in history ever. I've made a video about this before, but again, it's worth reiterating our rights do not come from the government. It's not as if the Constitution lists our rights and those are the only rights we have. And then uh, the government can, at, at its own whim or at its own discretion, decide to remove or exchange or add or whatever rights to that document. That is not how rights work. Rights, rather, are inherent in mankind. And the government recognizes those and respects those. That's it. It's really that simple. Rights do not come from government. They come from God. And when you lose sight of that, it's very easy to get into this thinking of, well, all we got to do is just repeal the Second Amendment or pass some weapon bans or whatever, and that will fix the problem. Now, you and I know that that would get nowhere near to fixing the problem, and the people who are passing those laws know that would not fix the problem. They're obviously interested in disarmament, not in actual safety or anything of that matter. However, as the common argument goes among the normies, right, the idea is, is that, well, the government can just change the law. That's what we do, right? That's why we elect people to Congress. That's why we have presidents and judges and all these things to change laws when we need to. And, you know, look, we've just outgrown the law of the Second Amendment, so we need to change it. Rights are not up for vote. It, it really comes down to being that simple. Rights are not up for vote. Now, I can hear the cries of Roe v. Wade right now. Well, that's a right, and the Supreme Court has removed a right, and so you're a hypocrite. Well, unfortunately for you, uh, murder isn't a right. So I want you to remember, 
Laws come and go. Uh, and whether or not they ever repeal the Second Amendment or pass a ban on these types of weapons or these types of magazines or whatever, rights are immutable. The right to self-defense never changes. Most governments throughout all history have recognized the right to self-defense. Rights are immutable. And the nations who have ignored the right to self-defense in history have done so at their own peril. So laws may come and change. They might ban these weapons or change this or change that or repeal the Second Amendment. But at the end of the day, the facts of the case are never going to change. Because rights are inherent to human beings and come from God, not government, the government can pass laws and, and deny reality. But at the end of the day, reality always wins. And you're going to have to come home and deal with the consequences of whether or not you choose to respect reality. Think about it. Do brave deeds and endure.